What's up guys, this is Tabletop Vibes, and today we're taking a look at Fury of the Elements by Mark Savinsky. So, what do we think? This is a great game, and the artwork is absolutely top notch. Yeah. It's kudos it's to the creator for this one. This one is right. just fantastic. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, this game, you have a two-player card bidding battle where you have the Void, who's coming in and wants to just consume everything, yeah. and you have the Fury, which says, ah, hell no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to push back against that. Right. So these two powers are going to be battling out over the course of a 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 grid. Right. And whoever has the most points or the most cards down is going to win at the end through all the various mechanics that happen. Right. There's a bunch of point scoring, right. which we'll get into later. Exactly. So the core of this game is your four basic elements. You have your fire, your wind, your earth, and your water. And really how all these relate to each other is really what makes up this game. Not to be confused with wind, earth, and fire. Nice. Not that. So on your turn, you'll have a hand of cards and you're going to be playing a card down on the grid. And a card consists of one to four, that's their power, their four, one of their four infinity types, yeah. and of course some flavor text or flavor uh, graphic yeah, on the card. Yeah, graphics. And you'll be playing these down and you'll see that there's some arrows associated with them. And when these arrows point to a card with another arrow or not right. some sort of battle occurs with it and whoever has the highest power wins and the other card is removed right. if they have the same power a that's where the affinity wheel comes in power clash happens uh, oh, but uh, uh, not quite so it's a power clash if their affinity oh, type is not related. Is not related. Right. right. So if you have like water Opposites. and earth, right. which is not a related one, then a power clash occurs. Yes. But if you have, let's say, air, uh, sorry, uh, water and fire, right. fire will take over, uh, sorry, water will take over fire. Right. <laughs> get that straight. Uh, and they'll win There's the battle. a lot of elements that remember. But when a power clash happens, yeah. you flip that affinity wheel, and so in a future turn, it's fire takes over yeah. water, and so on and so forth. So it reverses. Neat so that, little mechanic. Yeah, so when that in. happens, you're gonna what you're gonna do is right. It clashes. Yeah. The cards stay where they are, yep. which is really cool. And then the person who initiated the power clash then takes a spell card. Yes, and that's then the you're other able benefit. to either play it immediately, or you can put it in reserve. And then you also can get a what is it? Shards of Shards of Rocknar. Rocknar. <laughs> Which breaks the game in a sense yeah. where, like, Jason got the red shard of Rocknar. And yep. that means that he, I, once played, cannot uh, capture his red fire cards. Fire cards. Right. Which is awful because I had a Titan <laughs> of fire that I needed to capture to be able to use his ability. Which, right. More on that. Right. So you mentioned the Titans. Yes. Okay. So they're one. So that's the basic kind of play. Nope. Then you got some other mechanics. Yes. So you have the shards of Rocknar, which is part of the spells. You got these spell mechanics, which p provide one-time yeah. powerful abilities, or allow you to mill some of your cards you to get better hands. With all of them. They're worth a point. Yep. Then you got your titans, and these titans provide so cool. a continuous passive ability. And when you charge them up, yeah. they have some really powerful effects. How you charge them up is when you claim something of a type that they need. So for like the fire type, you want to claim fire cards if you can. If you can, because I couldn't. And then once it's charged up, you can choose either to have take it as a five point card, or it has another powerful ability, which we'll yes. get into shortly. Right. Yeah, sneak, sneak well, peek. and so with the Titans, though, you have four of them that are dealt to you. Mm -hmm. Well, you get to, you can choose one. I personally don't like the choosing thing. I mean, I guess it'll help stage what kind of strategy you want to take. I don't like it. I like the randomness. <laughs> also, it's just fun to like randomly select who you've yeah. got. So you get your uh, four, you reveal one, and then you can play and charge it like Jason was stating, mm -hmm. and or you can discard it. Like in my case, I had to discard my guy because Jason played a shard that said I, ke I cannot capture red, and I needed to capture red for to charge okay. my titan. So it's another game mode that you can add into the base game or right. be removed. I would always play with this because it just makes it way more yeah, fun. Yeah, it's a lot more fun. So as you're playing this game, what's going to happen is that the board's going to start filling up. Yes. The card's going to be removed and added, but the board's going to start filling up. And then when you get a three of a kind, four of a kind, or five of a kind, yes. the same alignment type of the you know, worth fire Air, and wind one. Yeah. Yep. Then a... <sighs> oh, a void. void event. It's a void event. <laughs> yeah. we'll it's literally called void. Void event. So basically... Yeah. 
<laughs> um, vo the, the void itself is saying, ah, you know, things are going too well. You're making things too aligned with everything. I'm going to come in. I'm going to take one of my void cards and I'm going to put it on the board and destroy whatever is there. Right. And the cool part about the void cards is it has numbers. So mm -hmm. on the grid that you're playing with the player mat, it has A, B, C, D, E. E. And then you put one, that, two, three, the, four, five. Yeah. The yep. void card has C2, E1. And that's where the void drops in and right. sucks the life up. Right. So you can kind of see from all of this that this really creates a complexing, continuously manipulative game. Yeah where your strategy is continually evolving and changing as the game progresses. Right. Which really gets a lot of difficulty on this yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. you can get, like, we were when we played, at one point, we both just had hands that helped each other. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, yeah. like literally, I had a bunch, I had a shard, the blue shard mm -hmm. of Ragnar. Ragnar? I can never remember how to say it. Rokner. Rokner. And so he can't capture blue. I can't capture red. We get points for every red card on the, on the board. Yep. And or every red card and every blue card, and mm -hmm. I'm over here playing red cards. He's over here playing blue cards. That's all, I can play. like, that's all we had. <laughs> so we had to just like, and there's ways to manipulate that by discarding spells. Right. But it's, I mean, you got to be use the hand you were dealt. Use the hand you're dealt. But so you continue to play, and then there's a couple of end game triggers. Yes. So either you fill up the whole whole board, so 25. it's like 25, uh, 25 squares, yep. five by five. <laughs> you burn through all of the spells. Right. Um. That's it. Actually, yeah, it's just I think that's yeah, I know. I know. I was going to go for a third, but I just the, the yeah, second thing though is it's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. the spell. There's a decent sized spell right. deck. I don't see that happening no. right away, no. unless you guys are just. And you can. The cool part is you can trigger a power clash from my off my own cards. Oh, your own cards. That's right. Yeah. So if there's you don't like in there, if you don't like the way the reverse elements or the elements are looked are going mm -hmm. to like power wise, you can reverse it. But I can do it to my own cards. Right messing up his strategy or bettering mine or messing up my own which right. i did twice and, and that's part of the strategy is if you don't have any good things that'll hurt your opponent you can actually set up cards to give yourself a clash to get yourself a spell card yep. or change the alignment so that you can actually be better right. in the future cards yeah exactly yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's fantastic it's yeah. again it's one versus one and you're battling it out right now another thing i really like about this game is that the creator embedded a um, beginner's mode directly into the game. It's helpful. So you normally have a five by five grid. Well, highlighted is also a three by three grid. And this is just the fury mode. The, the other one is the Titan fury mode. That's the main one. Oh. But the fury mode just uses the base cards, the one through four of different alignments. You put down and whoever has the most of their card at the end wins. And this really helps to kind of get introduce yourself to the yeah. mechanics. I like that. It's like a it's like a teach mode. Yeah, and I like that. And okay. it helps you, yeah, like you were saying, they, you're starting to grasp the concept. We got to play this actually at Gen Con mm -hmm. with the creator, so which I, was a blast. So he taught us how to play. He showed us the expansion, Titan mode. I think there's going to be some other cool stuff in the, when the Kickstarter is released. Mm -hmm. Uh, like the mat could be super cool. Oh yeah, the you mat got the, was really cool. Yeah. You got like again, the Titans yeah. are awesome. You have these the void. I like the void. He just looks <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the menacing void and the really pissed off Titan. Yeah, the, he's the like fury, 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 fury yeah. pissed off fury. He's yeah. like called Elmund or Elmund. Or, he looks awesome too. Yeah. But yeah, you. I mean, we got to play at Gen Con and we got to see all this stuff, and he just he walked us through it, and it's a blast. Yeah, and I like a ton of replayability because oh, yeah. there's going to be more expansions. And every game is going to be different because mm -hmm. the strategy you take, the titans that you have, your person jacking up your moves. Um, I actually won the game that we played because the void came out. Yes. And it took away my card, which I thought was bogus. You lost I was one like, point. Oh my gosh, no. I lost a point, but then it took away the alignment. So yes. when a void comes out on either three of one card, four of one card, five of one card, as when I say one card, I mean element. Um, and then you get points three, four, or five at the end of the game for that. And he would have gotten two three, po three points. Three points. Yeah. I would have gotten one. Broke the middle of it. Broke it yeah. with the void, <laughs> making me win thirty-five to thirty-four. Yeah. What? Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of RNG Finally. involved in this as well as well as planning. <laughs> and but overall, it is just a fantastic game. Yeah. Definitely a lot of replay value. I can definitely see how you can run expansions on this, adding right. more mechanics in this yeah. in the future. So and uh, it's pretty quick. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, yeah, we played cool. in like twenty-five minutes. Yeah. Like once you understand the concept. And you get the rules down where, like, some of the terminology, you're good. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I would always play with Fury, Titan Fury mode. Yeah. It's just, it's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah. And you can always discard. Yes. Forgot to mention that. Because I was trapped. Titan. My yeah. Titan, you can always discard your Titan. The only downside is he's worth five points and a cool ability to kill a Void card. That's right. So, which, yeah, yeah. It's coming to Kickstarter at some point soon. Keep a lookout for it. As always, like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.
and we'll catch you next time.